All right, 1600 peeps, I have 11 minutes and 57 seconds left on my phone's uh, storage capacity for Fankin video. So we gotta make this count. We gotta go through all the systems of this fetal pig in that time. Can we do it? I'm doubtful, but we'll see. If the video suddenly erupts and has a quick cut to it with another section, that's what happened. But let's start off with the top part of the pig. This pig has been named Wilbur Bacon Jr., one of my students in my A.M.P. class. I have used it for our purposes. It's one of two pigs we'll use. The other one is Lil T. Um, but first, let's start off with some structures in the mouth. So I've taken the tongue out, seen there, and so we can actually view the internal structures a little easier. So the first one of these is the hard palate. Hard palate. And so pulling back on the mouth, this little rascal. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So that ribbed area, that's your hard palate. It's formed by uh, a bone called the palatine bone. So hard palate. Okay, then we have the next one, which is the soft palate, and that's found down there. So you can see where the ribs end, and that's that last little point, it's called the soft palate. If you touch it, it's soft. So there you go. Uh, sometimes if you've ever had a brain freeze, one of the things they talk about is there's blood vessels that go through this entire area. And so, like, and, like, nerves. So one of the things I've seen people say is, like, you can push your tongue up to the roof of your mouth, like so, and, like, hold it there, and that should warm up your area, and so it can get rid of the brain freeze. But my problem is, like, whenever I'm eating something, get a brain freeze. Like, my tongue's cold, too, so it makes it worse. Uh, but I'm, I get notorious brain freezes. It's, it's not a fun time. Uh, but I took the, the next part of the structures, though, I removed it so we can actually see it a little easier. And that's going to be part of the vocal cords. So down here, we need to find the larynx, and that's this enlarged structure here. That's the larynx. Inside of there are the vocal cords where air will pass through, vibrate off those cords, and then make noise. So the familiar oink oink noise is made here. If we flip it over, we see a flap. It's a little more noticeable here. That's the epiglottis. Function of the epiglottis is very important. Can you eat and not die doing so? And can you drink without dying doing so? If you've answered yes to those questions, that means, well, good, you're watching the video and alive. And then also, the epiglottis is responsible for that. It will close down to prevent food and liquid from going into your trachea, which will go into your lungs, and then, well, that makes it very hard to breathe. So the epiglottis is a super important function. And you can see it, it actually kind of folds down a little bit. Inside of here, it's kind of hard to see, but you can kind of make out the area. That's where the vocal cords will be, and that's the glottis is, which is on your sheet, but I don't have a pen for it because I have to hold it like this. It just doesn't work. But it's in that dark mist, uh, that uh, dark abyss. Maybe later on I'll, I'll cut one open. I'll cut this in half and take a picture of it so you can see it on the portal. Um, but that's that. Uh, so thanks. If that dries, you can probably, like, I don't know, use it as like a whistle or something, but that's... I've seen people do, do that, and then they give me get an idea and like the approximation of the noises or something, but I don't know. I don't think it really works. Uh, anyway, let's, I'm going to slide my tray on down. Uh, so we move on, and so let's look at the next structures. The heart and the lungs, I believe, are a good one. Oh, and the trachea. Might be. forgot about the trachea. That's down here. So this long rib structure, that's part of your trachea. And so that carries air. Uh, and only air to your lungs. Now note, the trachea is always easy to see on a pig dissection because it's made of cartilage, and so it stays open. This is important for air passageway, otherwise it would deflate down and become nothing. Uh, your esophagus is soft, so it will fold flat when not in use. The trachea, though, does not, so you can actually breathe. How convenient. Um, and then so we have, uh, so let's continue on down. We've got the trachea, oh, the thyroid. We're going to come over to little t for this one because it's actually still intact. Thyroid, this thing here. It's the bulb below the larynx. That's your thyroid. Uh, the thymus is on your sheet, but it has been mutilated and it's not going to be asked. So don't worry about it. Uh, so it is gone. Uh, but anyway, so now we can move on and look at the lungs. Lungs. And so since we're at little t, we'll stay there. So there's a lung there. Then, oh boy. Roll on over there, girl. Uh, there we go. And then there's the other lungs over there. One of your questions is going to ask you how many lobes of the fetal pig there are. Make your predictions now because we're about to go through it. There's one there. There's one there. There's one there. There's one up there. There. 
and there. That's six. But there's the mystery seventh lobe but down there where my middle finger is pointing to right there. That's your seventh lobe. So that's your answer to that question. Seven lobes to the fetal pig lung. Uh, we do not have that many. We have five. Uh, they have seven. So just how it goes. Uh, in the middle there is the heart. Uh, it talks about cutting one open and looking at the chambers. Maybe if we'll have time, separate video or pictures, but not in this one. That's your heart. That one's pretty easy. The diaphragm. Super, super important structure when it comes to breathing. So it's a muscle. We're going to go over here to Wilbur Bacon Jr. And that's this little flap there, this muscly flap. And so what that does is it changes the volume of space where your lungs are, which changes the, the size of your lungs, which then causes air to either move in or out of your lungs. So all made possible through the diaphragm. So my finger is there now. That's the diaphragm. Okay. Uh, so now let's get into the digestive system and some of the lower uh, abdominal organs. Oh, wait, we forgot the esophagus. Uh, so to get down in there, though, we need to get to go through the esophagus. We've got one of these here. And so this is tricky to spot So because it's a flat tube and they will deflate. So I'm going to shove this probe through there. There's a picture that you'll see on the portal. It's decent. But, yeah, this is going through the esophagus. It's underneath the trachea, so it's usually a little hard to spot. Uh, let's see. How's our time? Oh, we've got five minutes. Uh, we can do it. So the stomach, well, that's not the best one to start with. Let's start with the liver, which is, ah! oh, goodness. See that thing? Just poked myself with it. That did not feel good. It punctured the glove. Should be okay. Uh, liver, found there, big liver. Underneath the liver is the gallbladder. Sorry if the camera moves. I'm reaching over to grab things, just, just as an FYI. I'm not trying to make you sick. Um, if you ever saw the movie Cloverfield, that had a real bad shaky cam. Uh, I don't think I could actually watch it anymore. I feel like that just made me sick. But I saw it in theaters. It was, uh, it was all right. Uh, gallbladder. Uh, and so the gallbladder is underneath the liver. Not all mammals have it, but the fetal pig does. The rat doesn't. But there it is. Gallbladder. Little sac, source bile. Now we can actually see the stomach, you know, then move that thing out of the way. The liver, that is. Stomach found here. It's a little sac, right? Stores food, breaks it down. Uh, you can feel it. It's got a real mushy texture to it. Okay. Uh, now let's do the pancreas. So another one of the digestive organs. Also plays a role in the endocrine system. So if you're looking to fill out organs for different systems, pancreas has two functions. Uh, there it is. And so the pancreas can be hard to find, and that's right there, though. So, ooh, that's, hope that turns out well. Yeah, it looks okay. You have some, some pictures to the label, too, but that's the pancreas. And then we have we covered the esophagus, small intestines, which is right there. So all of this is small intestines. It's extremely long. Uh, very much longer than the, the large intestines is. And this is where most of your food absorption takes place. So that's why you need all that surface area for that. And then we have the large intestine here. And so that's your large intestine. It's much smaller. Most water is reabsorbed and some solutes and ions at this stage, but not really food. Food occurs in the large intestines. This is just where it kind of removes water and hardens up the poop for expulsion as it leaves the body through the colon or through the cecum down here to leads out. Okay. Ooh, we're getting low on time. I think reproductive is going to be a separate part. Uh, the spleen is coming up. I love the spleen. It's a fun one. Uh, it's a cute little thing. You know, it's like a little tongue hanging out in there. It's like, hey, look, I'm the spleen. I'm just hanging out, doing my thing, rolling over the stomach. You know, it's like a little cloak, a sash, if you will. Inside the abdominal cavity. That's a spleen, so, so you can really see it in all of its glory. Spleen helps break down uh, dying red blood cells. It plays a role in the immune system. So the spleen. So there's our liver. The liver, I didn't mention this before, it helps with processing. A, it, tons of, it does a ton of stuff. So a lot of what you eat will, it will drain out of the small intestines via blood and go up to the liver where it processes all that stuff. Make sure everything's good, no toxins. A lot of medications you take will get processed here. Uh, the liver also makes bile, so a lot of functions with the liver. It's an amazing organ. Big fan. Uh, hats off. One of my other favorite organs, 
One of my other favorite organs is the kidney. I'm a big fan of the urinary system. Huge, huge fan. I think it's so fascinating. So here we go. The kidney to there. That's our kidney. All right. And then from the kidney, that's where urine is formed. The kidney does a lot of other things too. Uh, so by removing and making urine, it's heavily involved with uh, blood pressure because blood pressure and urine formation are directly related to each other because the pee that you make comes from the blood fluid. So you didn't know that, now you do. So if you're peeing a lot, you're essentially one of the things you're doing is also decreasing blood pressure. So sometimes one of the treatments for high blood pressure is a diuretic, which makes you pee more, thus decreasing your blood volume. The more you know. My mom's on diuretics and has been uh, pretty much for as long as I can remember. So I just touched my phone with my gloved hand. And that's not the last time or the first time my phone will touch this pig today. It's touched the feet a lot. Uh, but the sacrifices, all for y'all. Uh, but here's the ureter. It's kind of hard to see. Hopefully a picture later will make it clear. I don't want to get too close for contamination purposes. But yeah, that's it. And our last minute. And then the bladder. It goes up here, so the bladder. And so, ooh, that's kind of, sorry. My phone does an autofocus thing when I'm recording. So if it looks a little weird at times, that's why. Uh, but yeah, that's the bladder. Storing some pee. So uh, next up, we do have the urinary, or the reproductive system. Um, that'd be the second part. So this is the end of part one, part two coming up for repro.